A few years back, I made a video on scale and lime flushing of your tankless unit. Since that time, we've moved across the country and we've gotten another ream tankless unit and it's due for some lime and scale flushing. So I thought I'd take you through the steps. The ream unit we're working with today is an RTG 84 DBLN-2. It's a high efficiency unit rated at 4.6 gallons per minute, 167,000 BTU. And for those of you who are curious, this unit serves two bathrooms, one kitchen, one laundry room, and even in winter when temperatures drop into freezing, it has no problem maintaining hot water to all those devices, even simultaneously. And what's different on this unit is the service valves or isolation valves are only one per inlet and outlet instead of the two that we saw in the prior system. Water normally comes up and goes into the unit. This valve would be in the down position. When you turn it 90 degrees, then water's coming in from the outside going into the unit. Over on the hot water output side, Normally, this red valve would be going down and the water would just go through into the house system. But when we turn it 90 degrees, the water is now going out this tube down into our bucket. This bucket contains a couple of gallons of vinegar and there is a submersible pump there that is feeding that vinegar into the system so that it goes through the heat exchanger and flushes out the lime and scaling that has been building up over the years. The steps to properly flushing your system. One, you disconnect power. This is a plug-in unit, so you just pull the plug on it. If your unit is hardwired, then you trip the circuit and turn it off. Do not turn off the power at the remote. It's also advised to turn off the water main feeding the house, but in actuality, because these isolate the incoming water from the rest of the system, I find it pretty safe just to do the flush without having to turn off water to the entire house. It's also advisable to turn off the gas. Then you'll need three to four gallons of food grade vinegar, a submersible pump. The output of that submersible pump will come up and feed the input side, which is the cold water side of your tank. The hot water side, the output of that hot water side, it's what is what's going to return the solution back into the pail so that it gets recycled and it goes through the system. One can purchase the pump and these hoses as part of a kit at the big box stores, but if you decide to build your own, of course it has to be a submersible pump and one of the two hoses has to be female on both ends so that you can make a connection to the valve and to the inlet of the pump. The other hose just needs to have one male and one female since it's dumping out back into the pail. And of course you want a pail that holds at least five gallons. So with everything connected properly, then you just turn the valve so that it will get water from the pump and you'll turn the other valve so that water goes into the pail and then you start the motor and then you let it run for about an hour. The original vinegar solution was clear but as you see it has taken on some color as the solution flushes out the minerals in the system. What do you do with the used up solution? Well, if you're on a city sewage system you could use it to clean out your drains. Otherwise, I wouldn't flush it down your septic system because I think that might overwhelm. This is probably also a good time to check your TNP, temperature and pressure gauge, and activate it so that it flushes out. Make sure that the other end is going to some place like a bucket or outdoors. If you activate the valve and no water comes out, then this unit needs to be replaced. If water does come out, but when you close this valve, the water continues flowing, then you need to replace this valve. Once the hour is up, you turn off the pump. And before we start restoring the valves to the normal position, 
there's a filter right here. So you'll want to open that and take that filter out and just clean it. When removing the filter, you may want to put a towel and maybe a container nearby to catch any excess water that might pour out of the system. With the filter out, you can see that there's probably crud on the inside and that needs to be cleaned out before you replace it. Here's what it should look like after cleaning. And if you find it difficult to just back flush it with water, you might want to try a toothbrush and some dishwashing lotion and just get on the inside to, to loosen everything and, and get it out. So it looks uh, brand new, so we're ready to reinstall the filter. It just goes in, turn clockwise until you get to the end of travel. And I make it snug, but not so tight that you're going to damage the filter. With the filter reattached and the valves still in their flushing positions, I've emptied out the pail and now I'm ready to allow some water into the system. And you should immediately see water coming into the bucket. This is a perfect time to make sure that there are no leaks around the filter or the valve. Monitor the bucket so it doesn't overflow. Basically, this water is just flushing out the system of any remaining vinegar. And I'd probably do it twice. That's about 10 gallons or so. When you're down to your final flushing, close off the hot water valve. And now you have cold water coming into the system and it's returning back into the plumbing and you're bypassing this hose and this hose. All you have to do at this point is go to the closest water fixture and run the hot water so that any air that's in the system gets purged out. Once you have solid water coming out of your sink, then it's okay to plug in the unit and you're back in business. And make sure to check all your fittings once you take off these hoses and you attach all your caps that there are no leaks. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.